I need to kill a YouTube window. Hang on. Yeah, you're good. What is going on, everybody? Very excited for this one. This is going to be the last episode of Beyond the Basics that I've had going on for a while now, a series of bringing in people that are absolute experts in their field. And I am so thankful today to have my good friend Thor, or RP Thor, as he's known in a lot of spaces, who is the example of what it means to become durable in today's life. I know that we have, have seen a lot that, you know, oh, in today's society, like, oh, my feelings are hurt. I don't like that. You know, all that type of stuff. And when life kicks you down, you got to stand back up. And Thor has had a lot of experiences like that. I know I've had a lot of experiences like that. And Thor being a mentor to men all around the world, just on that topic, I, I, I knew I had to have him on. So Thor, go ahead and introduce yourself. Sure. Would you like me to give it just a synopsis of the, my background? Yeah. Just All right. For anybody who may not know who you are. So since we're in the manosphere and most of us go by pseudonyms, I will just let everybody know right up front. I was born with the name Thor. I was born in, in 1962 and it was one year before the comic book Thor was introduced. So you're looking at the original Thor right here, right now. <laughs> but I sure hated the name when I was growing up, but now it's cool, right? So the original Thor is sitting right here. So I'm uh, 58, almost 59 years old, and uh, it's uh, been around for a little while. Started work, graduated high school at 16, and started work full time uh, in an apprenticeship to become uh, a power lineman. Those are the guys that run around, climb the poles, uh, restore high voltage electricity in the distribution and transmission system across the grid so that people have electricity which is so indispensable today if you've ever been in an outage we're the guys you call and uh, it's an interesting career uh, not many people know but it's 99.9 percent .9 men that are in the field now it's not like that everywhere but just the u.s it just happens to be uh, and it's not because of the patriarchy there's reasons for it it's very hard, very dangerous work, uh, and uh, it requires very long hours away from your family, so it's just not palatable. We might be gone for weeks. Uh, we might be flying helicopters, landing on energized 500,000-volt lines in the, the worst conditions you can possibly think. Now, with that, it's a good career, and uh, you can travel. You can see the world, and it's just not that appealing to, to females, so that's really the reason. And it's very dangerous. And of course, the actual, we're working on it, but the fatality and injury rate is actually higher per capita in the U.S. for linemen than it is for policemen and fire combined. So it's okay. more dangerous than being a fireman or a policeman combined. Uh, now, there's a couple of, couple of careers that are a little bit more dangerous for men, and that would be deep sea diving, deep sea welding, uh, crab fishermen, Alaskan fishermen. And loggers seem to be the ones that are above power line. And now we're, we're making strides. It's just there's a lot, a lot of issues with, with power line over the years. But uh, electricity is a very dangerous job, but very rewarding at the same time. So throughout that career, I would teach other men. They were called apprentices as they learned the craft. And we would have them for three to four years. Generally, they're very much younger and would look to the older men to stay safe and stay alive. And we would counsel them and, you know, um, coach them on their performance so that they could become very competent and uh, not be hurt or hurt anybody else. I found that very rewarding. That's what led me to, you know, this corner of the internet is as I'm approaching the twilight of my career, uh, which will be over in a few years. Um, I was looking to pass some of my knowledge on, not just in the craft, but some of the life skills and knowledge that I picked up along the way. Uh, and uh, hopefully I can do that. Now, I've been laid flat a few times in my life, uh, a couple times, once very early on with a divorce. And then uh, I got tangled up in 12,000 volts. As you can see, the scars on my hands, they're not too bad, but I got some deformities. Uh, this was in 1991. And, uh, you know, I made a mistake straight up. Had cranial rectal intrusion of the third degree, which is placing your head up your rear end. And, uh, it's because I didn't want to be late getting home. I was 27 days late. It took me four years 
and 14 surgeries to get enough motion back to get back on top. Yeah, and it wiped me out financially and put me under. I didn't go bankrupt though, but it was definitely a zeroing out. Taught me a lot about becoming durable. Um, so it happened a couple times and we looked past it. It was just stuff, you know, still alive. You know, I could still draw breath, you know, like my Pappy always says, stand up, rub some dirt on it, get back in the game, son. So that's what we did, so to speak. Uh, and it's turned out really well. And, and uh, you know, I try to help others not fall into the same mistakes or patterns that I have. And just for the record, you know, I know a lot of single guys watch this. And uh, guys, I am married, been married uh, 28 years with the woman for 30. So I have a very long-term relationship running as well. Uh, but uh, I do counsel guys on their relationships and how they can make them work uh, from more of a practical red pill perspective, I would say, uh, you know, keeping the client in mind what his desires are. So that's where I come from. A lot of my clients want to learn about the craft. Uh, one of the, one of the most popular items I'm hit on is, is for some of the young guys that have been raised by single moms is really how to create a durable masculine, you know, or a, or a um, dominant masculine presence in their own life so they can be more, hmm, how do you say it, more of a man yet not come off as a douche, but take up space, be realistic, you know, and some of those are social skills and, and really they're people skills too that unfortunately with the lockdowns we have now, um, you know, it's hard to develop those social skills and we all need other people. We all stand on the shoulders of giants. So those skills, it, I find myself more and more imparting to younger and younger men. And even some men that are in their forties or fifties that have gone through divorce and really have been isolated from being social for so long. And uh, just picking up the common communication skills, learning, yes, learning how to be assertive yet not too assertive. They come off as a dipshit, but enough to where you can assess a room you can use your gaze, you know, you can use your body language, uh, basically teaching guys how to read sub communication too. So they can be dominant and masculine. And, uh, that's quite attractive. It's quite attractive to everybody actually, because that's the leadership qualities that we all look for. And you can see a lot of this example by really good leaders, you know, they're quite attracted to both sexes, you know, and for different right, reasons though, but to be led. So I seem to have more and more clients that are asking me about those things in life. And uh, so I've been putting a lot of effort into coming up with uh, some courseware on dominant masculine presence, how to create it. And I've seen some, I've seen some of the stuff that you've been putting together and it is absolutely fantastic. Now I have to say like, wow, you've lived, you've lived a lot of life so far. <laughs> And that's, uh, it's great that you want to give back and teach people how to become more durable, how to step into their true masculine. Now, how does one even start to go about that? I feel like, um, you know, some people may think it, but they don't always recognize, you know, you know, even, yeah, even just recognizing, hey, I need to be more dominant. I need to be more masculine. I need to have tougher skin. How do you even get started on that journey? Ah, this is interesting because most people won't, they won't take the thoughts or the time to think they even need to do it. But if you've experienced a severe trauma, be it psychological or physical in nature, you realize how dependent you actually are and how being that isolated teaches you that you can be very durable, but you need others. And how do you solidify those relationships around you so that you can be strong? And, and there's, there's, you can be strong by yourself by by all means there's i'll tell you about commitments you have to make to yourself but you have to realize that we're actually just this little weak meat bag in this earth suit and you know we could be snuffed at any time or broken and so for us to you know uh waste our time playing video games or not being not exercising or just satisfying you know these brief needs quickly is very destructive to our bodies our minds and uh, it makes us very weak and not durable it's surprising how durable the human body is and yet at the same time how fragile it is i think durability really springs from the mind and the will uh yeah. and once you have been realize how weak and frail these human suits we have on are 
then you can fortify your mind and your will. And that's where durability really rises from. And we'll, you know, will enable you to pass any test, whether you're flattened out, zeroed, your loved ones are crushed before you or they're taken away from you. You can move on. It can always be worse. That's one of the fundamental philosophies as you're looking around and giving the woe is me signals. Uh, you got a couple choices. You can either bolster yourself up by becoming this giant know-it-all socially. I know everything, beat on my chest. That's kind of false. Or you can say, I don't know everything. I'm going to leverage all those around me and I'm going to become the best version of myself I can be. And it is just a journey of steps. I must take each step one at a time. And that's probably uh, the most most important thing that I discovered even when I was burned is coming back from something like that. I had to stay to myself every day, no matter what, I'd be just a little better than I was the day before, whether that was physical therapy, mental therapy. I'd pick something up and read one page, something. I had to learn one thing and be better. One thing every day. If I missed a day, I didn't cry about it and make an excuse to start next Monday. A lot of us do that. Oh, I missed a day, so three won't be so bad. I'll start on Monday and I'll do three things. It's a surefire yeah. way to sabotage yourself and yet to bolster your ego. You're just you're just putting a Band-Aid over your ego. And no, you have to do one thing every day. At least that worked for me. And that's what I teach a lot of my students is just one thing, one bite at a time. I like to say, eat the elephant one bite at a time and don't start with the tail. Do you know why? <laughs> why is that? Because the tail tastes like shit and you'll lose your appetite and you won't eat the elephant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> so, That's good stuff. I, I, I love that. I love how, because I really do, I believe that it becoming durable, it really starts up here. If you don't have this down, then it's, it's really nothing. It's like, how do you overcome all this? And the yep. human mind really is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, if you believe that you can do it, and you, tr you truly believe it, it'll happen. It's true. It's very, very true, you know. And I, I keep this model. This is a modified model I've had for many, many years, especially since I was burned, even before, is this simple model as you're going through this journey is nothing works. Nothing. Nothing works at all unless you do the work then it works. So that's what I'm saying is nothing works unless you do the work. And that goes for anything. There's no shortcut. There's no magic pole to make you make you be a huge buff God. You got to put in the weights. You got to do the eating. You got to do whatever it is. You got to do it, you know? So nothing works unless you do the work. That's one of the things I like to say uh, to myself, you know, especially right before I have a large task to do and I really don't want to do it. And I'm thinking maybe I should find something else to do. Guess what? Nothing works unless I do the work. Let's get down and get at it. You know, Absolutely. so I like that kind of philosophy. Now, uh, I've said before in the past, I like stoicism. I really do. I like the emotional control, but I will tell you this. It's not about the emotional control. I still feel every emotion that every human being does. It's just I kind of let it flow through me and I don't expose it beyond my body or my expressions. I still got it. I might delay it or push it into something else, but it's kind of a skill you have to learn. And it's important because if you, if you let your emotions rule you as a man, you react emotionally. And that's usually very good for making quick decisions and in certain environments. I mean, think about it. That's how females make decisions emotionally with feelings. And it's very good from a survival perspective that most of the time it's going to be right. But when it's not, it's bad not. So I want to redirect that and try to put a, a layer of rationale above that so that I can accomplish my task. Because even though I might be broken or hurt emotionally or, or, or bleeding out, you know, wrap it up, put some tape on it and continue on with every last breath, because that might be the difference, you know, or am I going to take a breath and start screaming? I've seen young men get mad and start screaming and throw down a piece of paper and start shaking doesn't solve any problems you know it's better that you fold it up set it down set your jaw okay let's fix this shit you know get down to brass tacks i don't see a whole lot of that even in our circles i see a lot of 
shall I just go ahead and say it like it is? Honestly, I see a lot say of grand, like I, I see a lot of grandstanding. Um, and sometimes grandstanding is good. It gets his viewers and it gets our point across, but I see more of it than necessary. If we're really going to teach people, that's as far as I would take it. So I'm yeah. glad to see guys like you out there. You know, I appreciate what you're doing. Uh, pretty much everybody that's in it, even if they're grandstanding, I appreciate what they do because I try to learn something from everybody out there. Even if I disagree, I will absolutely learn something and add it to that list of mine so that I can uh, see if it fits into my personal philosophies. Uh, no, that's that's great. And I think that a lot of times stoicism is very much misunderstood. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, oh, that means emotionless. And that is not at all. It is, right. as you said, it's learning how to interpret those emotions. And then what do we do about it next? And it, it was, you know, not too long ago, I was in a discussion with one of my good friends and he started to get explosive. And he was, he was not, I wouldn't say yelling, but he wasn't able to sit there and process what I was saying and work through the issue at hand with me. Uh, he started throwing things out, um, making jabs, things like that, all because he was frustrated. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, it's a true sign of stoicism where when you're faced with a problem that you may be upset about, you keep cool, calm, collected, and you deal with the problem. Absolutely. Oh, it's so true. I've seen guys ruin their lives because of an emotional button. I've watched a, a female push a, a guy's button. She knew where it was. She could uncover it and push it. Push it to the point where he blew up. Didn't end well. And it with cops. Life ruined. You don't need to let them push your button ever. I mean, Thor, ever. That's a, that's, a perfect, <laughs> that's a perfect transition. Because that is exactly what happened to me a few years back. You know, I was with I was with a woman that I did not get along with. Um, I thought somehow, some way she would just wake up and everything would work one day. Um, but I just kept dragging it on and I didn't have I didn't have the balls at the time to walk away. And one of those situations happened where there was an explosion of just screaming, yelling back and forth. Um, and I the uh, the person who lived above us ended up calling the cops and I yeah. ended up. I ended up getting arrested mm -hmm. uh, on domestic violence charges. Sure. And that was one hell of an experience going through that um, mm -hmm. because especially the state, they don't look at it like, um, you know, do you want to press charges? She says they do no. it anyway. They right. do it anyways. Right. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's devastating. And um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to take a step back from that because one thing I've noticed throughout the years, being an, of an older generation, uh, even though I may not look that old, I've been around a long time. I'm almost 60. So um, I notice with the young people and with women today, and, and it, it even crosses the age boundary. Women up to my age now, it's become very popular to be very childlike. And when I say very childlike, imagine teenagers, like a 13, 14, 15-year-old girl, and then take a look at women today, the young women that are, you know, out there dating and maybe some of the older ones that are in their 40s and maybe dating. Notice the childlike behavior that's running on and the way they speak. A lot of childlike behavior, a lot of pushback, even from men. Men will do this little pushback thing and this kind of this kind of teenage type behavior that's kind of emotionally rooted because I don't think they've ever been taught. So they're imitating those around them. You know, to where I'll speak my mind by God. You know, I'm just speaking my mind. I'm just being honest. Let me tell you something, guys. That's a surefire way to lead a shitty life. If you're speaking to somebody and it doesn't make a hill of beans because they believe this way or that way to what is in front of you with this human, you don't need to pick a fight or start a debate. It's fucking stupid. And you don't get anywhere. And it's immature. It is the strangest thing I've seen take hold in popular culture. I just can't imagine. I've seen young women do this. And I'm just like, they're arguing over the silliest, stupidest shit that doesn't even affect their lives. And they're staking huge portions of their, their, their future on this. You know, when I say future on how they behave with others, how they interact, maybe even jobs. Um, so, uh, that's one thing I want to impart to the younger guys is they don't know. So they need good examples on how to 
cope with life because some of this behavior acting like a child is a huge cope because the state has become so intrusive in our lives. It's big daddy might as well act like a little child, you know, and if you get in a fight, it's okay. State will separate you, you know, oh, it's okay. You know, so you never let anybody press your emotional buttons. You know, it's different when it comes to physical space, but if it's just words, you know, unless you're telling so-and-so to pull a gun on you, it's nothing, you know, it really is nothing in the long run. You know, and so I like to teach the guys too. as part of becoming durable is one of the things that you do to start right now today is act like you're in total control of yourself. Even if you're not, do not let it break the barrier. Uh, most successful people do feel like good luck played some part of the role, but in reality, they don't wait around for luck. They make their own luck. So appear and act as if you're in total control. Also, you know, don't waste any mental energy on what might happen and what ifs. If you do, it, it's just a waste of energy. Think about what's right in front of you. This is this is secret too to, to getting along in life is what's right in front of me, not the what if. And I notice that happens too. A lot of people, what if everything together? If you, <laughs> this is really funny when you're counseling somebody, you okay, I'm going to give you a solution potentially. And then they'll give me a reason why it doesn't work. And then another one. And then another one. And 90% of them are just what ifs. And it's like, well, what if a freaking plane fell out of the sky and hit you tomorrow and you had broken legs? What the fuck are you going to do then? You know, try something. <laughs> uh, and, and part of that is, you know, if you don't try those things, then you, it, you don't have a failure or regret. Well, I'll tell you what, regret is horrible. You know, if you fail, dust yourself off, take a deep breath, pick yourself up and say, ah, fuck, that was stupid. Let's try it again. You know, so failure is not necessarily a bad thing. It's a, it's a brutal teacher, but it's a strong teacher. Um, and never have a victim mindset. I mean, really, if you have that victim mindset, you'll be entitled to things because poor woe is you. And I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you, this is what my dad said to me when I was a young man. And I would cry because I started developing a, a bit of a mindset to where nobody's helping me. Boo hoo hoo. I'm not doing good at my homework. This, that, and that. And he says, son, do you need a helping hand? Yeah, dad, I need a helping hand. Then look to the end of your goddamn wrists. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's a good one. <laughs> and I went, dad. He was right, though. Might as well have been Odin himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I swear. And that, that it, it goes off of what you were saying before, that victim mindset. Um, there are so many free handouts today. And er, like, I, I don't want to say it's necessarily like a generational thing, but just people have found how to just play the victim instead mm -hmm. of doing the hard work. Yeah. And when they get kicked down, it's somebody else's fault, not their own. Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. or like let's say even with the schools today you know if your child's not doing well the parents come in and they're yelling at this teacher who doesn't get paid enough to deal with your bull crap so mm -hmm. they're just gonna they're just gonna pass the person anyways instead of you know no like the reason why your child's not doing well is because they're a problem in the classroom mm -hmm. you know and if you say that they like then go to the principal or go to the administration and say you would not believe what this teacher is saying about my child and then they move them to a different different classroom where they can get away with the behavior again yep well in the past if you were a problem in school this is the deep past but you know and and your dad came down there oh shit you were going to get an ass whooping better straighten your shit out and at least get along in school because you're not proving that you have the social acuity to get along in that environment so your dad was going to straighten your ass right up now, mom might run down there and say, oh, it's okay. They were just being mean to you. You got home to dad. It's like, son, why don't you go cut me a switch off that willow tree? <laughs> it's for you. <laughs> oh, now, man. you'd be so scared and so messed up by the time you brought that willow switch back. You thought he was going to get the beat the shit beat out of you, and then he'd barely tap you. <laughs> but it was so horrifying. It's like, okay, I get it. I get it. I fucked up. And then he'd tell you why you'd fucked up. 
and what you could do to be better. And then he was really good at this shit sandwich because he'd tell you how good you were, and then he'd give you the bad shit in the middle so you'd straighten up, and then he'd make you feel good at the end too. Beautiful people skills and training skills. So, you know, you fucked up here, but you know the one thing you did right is once you fucked up, you calm down, you know, you start thinking straight again, you know. So you have the potential. Now show me you got a kid. That's that's actually beautiful. Uh, that's a beautiful way to put it. I, I know when I was younger, uh, there were a couple times where something would happen and it was like, you know, wait till your father gets home. Mm-hmm. And the way that my mom would, would do that would really instill in me that fear. And nothing was ever as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, but when you know you've messed up and you're given that that time, that really teaches you stoicism. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, how to how to deal with something like that and think about your actions, think about the experience and, and realize, yeah, uh, this is how it probably should have been handled. Oh, absolutely, Alex. You know, one of the things that, you know, would be denied today by many social con- constructionism or constructionists would be, you know, as males of the species of any species, really, as competitive as we are for mating, is there is a underlying tone of violence with all of us. And because of that, we will behave or we will find a pecking order as to not have that violence erupt. And that goes as far as our children too. We'll have misbehaving boys and by just doing little things like, you know, that are social, you know, punishments, it's really not fixing the root of the problem. And once a young man and gets to that teenage years and figures out that he can now use violence against those people that are, you know, opposed to any sort of struct or strict uh, discipline with him, he now has power and he'll exercise that power. And unfortunately, we end up with young men in jail doing terrible things because of that. There's no restraint once they figure that out and they can get away with a lot of shit and they will, you know. And then the opposing side of that is there's just, you know, a complete surrender to, you know, if there's no threat of that violence, they don't recognize it. They just kind of lose all will to even try to fit in into that pecking order. Hence, we see, you know, some of the incel type crowd out there and you can't blame them if they're upset, you know, at that life, but it's too much of a victim mentality. I really would like to see some movement from those guys. And I've talked to some of them and got them to, to rethink. And what they get stuck on is one of the things I talk about in my uh, my durability class is, you know, you need to see the past is it's training. It's valuable training and nothing more to sit there and loop in your mind, whether it's a relationship and I could have done this better and she would have done this, or if I would have behaved differently here, if I would have said this differently, or if I would have had a better parent here, or if I would have had at least this one chance, oh my God, if I would have not fumbled the football in the homecoming game right before the touchdown, my life is ruined forever. No, it's just valuable training. It means nothing to today. If you can get past that and learn from your mistakes and not dwell on those things or recirculate them over and over you know what ends up happening is you get this fear of even trying because you already did and you failed so there's no point in embarrassing myself now you know i'm way above that now i'm way above it i don't have to do that now it's just an ego cope to kind of protect your ego your fragile ego that's been flattened into the earth and really it's in the past so it really makes no difference you know to where you're at right now other than it's a valuable learning you know, easier said than done. Yes. How many times have you been in a hard breakup with an LTR? Ooh, how many, uh, how many weeks uh, do you spend going over every little fucked up situation and thinking, okay, I have to learn from this. I have to fix it. What if I did this? What if I did that? Oh, I'll call her. I'll, I'll get her on the phone and tell her I won't do that anymore. It doesn't work. <laughs> Never works. Yep. Catalog it, move it back, be done with it. Feel the pain. Let it flow through you in and out of you. Get physical. Physicality will burn that off. And move forward being a better version of yourself. You know, I do a lot of coaching on guys that want to save their marriage, you know. Uh, and it can be done. It essentially is the, if, it, if it's already broken up and there is a, a split, it is somewhat of a very strong uphill battle. But 
it can be done. It's somewhat of the exception. I don't generally like to talk about the exceptions. I like to play the, the majority, you know, the majority of probabilities because that's where most of your success will come from in the long run, not playing the exceptions. You could waste a lot of time doing that, but it is possible. Uh, I do a whole course on how you can do that using dread game and how, but I'll tell you what, almost all of it is working on you, not yep. begging her back. At one time, she found you this stunning, amazing alpha. You need to get back there in spades if you have any hope to repair something like that. And if you can catch it early enough where it's just starting to wane in the bedroom in the LTR, you got a good shot at doing it. But it's going to take some fortitude, and you're going to have to eat the elephant. And unfortunately, if it's that part of your LTR, you already started with the tail. So you need to wash your mouth out, start over. <laughs> That's a good point. That is, it's a very good point. And it's always like, you know, and that, that desperation when somebody's trying to save a relationship or a marriage, they're already too far gone a lot of the time. And they don't understand that it, it really is because they let themselves go. Mm. And they don't, the fact that they want to try so hard to be one of those exceptions Mm -hmm. just goes to show how low that they actually view themselves mm -hmm. and view their own value. Yeah. Oh, dead on. Yep. So, I mean, just one thing I stress is don't let that past define you. So many guys do. And now they create this false thought process to protect their ego that I'm beyond it. Now I don't, I'm in monk mode. I'm way beyond it. I am not subject to these wants and desires instincts and this chemistry in my earth suit that drives me you can guide the chemistry in your earth suit but it all affects your instincts your emotions your thought patterns way more than you think you can guide them and that's really all i'm talking about is guiding them you know guiding your thoughts and memories so they don't define you and that you define you by choice you know um yeah, absolutely. That is one of the roughest things to go through, but it illustrates that circular thinking, that circular thinking in the past, and you define yourself by it. Oh, I did this. And it, it is such a painful thing that it, it is almost more painful than an actual death because there's no getting back from that. And you keep giving yourself the slightest hope. If I just change this or I just change that and I add it all together, it's this giant puzzle. And, it, it you know, by the time it gets there, there's really not much left for you. You've created it in your mind, you know, but uh, that's for another day. <laughs> that's a, that's a, I, I really like that. I never thought about it that way, that it can be more painful than a death because with mm -hmm. death, there's closure right then mm -hmm. and there. And with this, you know, that there is some way that you could make it happen, mm -hmm. but the way that that would work, like it, yeah, it's absolutely oh, it is. ridiculous. And how many of you had the breakup and then you know it's over, but then you satisfy that little itch in there and you go, well, she's never going to find a guy as good as me, ever. You know, like, what the fuck difference does that make? <laughs> you're just stroking your ego, man, because you, you're yep. sad sack, you know? Uh, I used to love that because I've had plenty of breakups, uh, more when I was younger, but mm -hmm. it was always it was always that statement, well, you're never going to find somebody as good as me. That's always what people go to. And it's just like, ay, ay, ay. If you want to hope, you want hope of getting her back, don't say that. Just be that. Exactly. Exactly. So it's that, yep. It's that uh, self improvement that's so important. Like if, if you, um, you know, if you guys separate, and I know some people who have been through this with mm -hmm. divorce, and then they see who that person became afterwards. <sighs> And then they want to get back with them mm -hmm. because they see how much they've improved, how better their life is. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, man, I messed up. Absolutely. If, if you go through that journey in the right way, by the time she comes back, you're already at the point that you would never go back to her. You could be. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Likely that would be the case. Mm -hmm. It absolutely would. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean. There'll be guys out there that says, well, you know, Thor, you've been married for, you know, some 20, 28, 29 years now. And so you're just saying that if you, you know, if it's split tomorrow with you, you'd be the same way. Oh, I would feel it. My favorite human being would be gone. You can have a favorite human being without having one itis, by the way. 
But here's the thing that I've learned over the years, and it's through some ups and downs. We don't talk about it now, but I've been through it all, is I have a go-to-hell plan, and that go-to-hell plan has an escape plan, and the escape plan is a separation or divorce. It also has a in-case-of-death option. You want a hard exercise to be durable? Write that shit down. It's a struggle. But if you do, the peace of mind that you have, because it is not unknown now, it is something that is known, you can put it away and you can really enjoy your life. And so there's no surprise when you do that. I mean, one of the biggest things you can do is simple. It's the Boy Scout motto, even though we don't have Boy Scouts anymore. It's be prepared, gentlemen. And you should be prepared for a breakup. Statistically, breakups are going to be there. Marriages don't last. People die. People get hurt. Be prepared, you know. And then when it does happen, you know, feel the emotions, but control them. Don't lose it. Don't regret. Don't react. And if you have a plan and you've been prepared, you'll know what to do. And you'll just do it. And that'll save you a ton of mental heartache and anguish. That is absolutely beautiful. I I like that. That that <laughs> running the death plan, things like that, these are hard things that people don't think about until something happens in their life. Mm-hmm. And when you're when you're actually force yourself to go through that exercise beforehand, mm-hmm. you're prepared. Yep. You're prepared. And it, it helps you deal with some of these tougher situations. I really like that. That's really good advice. Yep. Thank you, man. And, and you know, some of the other things I go over in being durable is not about you. Although the majority of it is, it's about how you behave. Like, you know, celebrate the success of others around you. Even if you're an acquaintance, if there's others, don't be envious. Don't be jealous. If somebody makes it, and you didn't, and they did it hurry, it's not luck. A lot of guys, oh, they're just lucky. They got this, they got that. You know what? Let's set that aside and say, shit, he did it right. Celebrate it, especially if it's someone in your circle, for God's sakes. That's a big deal, man. Someone in your family. I've seen people in families when somebody makes it or does something well, oh, that's because of this. Are you fucking kidding me? They're in your family, man. You know, why would you do, why would you be so destructive? This is about you being durable. That shows an incredible insecurity and weakness and need and neediness. So you're going to leave that neediness behind. You don't need it, but you admire the others around you. So, you know, don't resent awesomeness because that stuff comes back to you in spades. You know, don't burn your bridges, you know, celebrate other success and you'll see it comes back. You know, when your chips are down, those people will stand up for you, you know. And when the chips are down from them, that's right. Go over there and pick them up. Say, take a breath. Let me rub some dirt on it. Now get your ass back in the game. Now, that's one thing I like a lot, you know. And I've created a small community called the Dragon Ship that's all about that. It's about that group of men that will do that for each other. I love it. That's good stuff. Hey, go ahead. I gotta, I gotta grab my charger for a second. Sure. Go, go ahead and tell everybody about the dragon ship because I think what you're doing with it is absolutely fantastic. Oh shoot! I didn't expect to do that. I, I, I should have posted the link, but I'll tell you about the dragon ship. Thor's dragon ship is uh, all oh, about. Wow. Okay. There we go. Yeah, Thor's dragon ship is all about a monthly mastermind Zoom webinar. Now it's only for men, and there's a reason for that. You know, men need an outlet to bounce ideas, emotions, and thoughts off of each other. And the idea behind the dragon ship is that it's going to be limited to 50 guys. And those 50 guys are going to leverage each other's experience in life on relationships, careers, jobs, fitness, diets, lifestyles, hobbies, everything that we do to make our lives more enjoyable. And we're going to leverage that experience so that it is much easier for us to find our way and also to establish essentially uh, a persona about ourselves that is genuine and very authentic. Many men struggle with authenticity these days. They can't own who they are. And so we're going to help them. And as the dragon ship grows and leaders appear, We'll be splitting the dragon ship into various chapters so that these men can help each other across the globe. It's very reasonable. It's $47 a month. It's a three-hour webinar that's out there right now. You can you can purchase a membership. It's a subscription. 
Every month you get a couple of pieces of homework and reading material to study, and then you're going to apply it in your life and come back with a story to tell. And then you'll listen to the other men and we'll help each other on these topics. It's a very free form. It's a very uncensored and uh, nobody will say anything about it. It's very secure. So uh, $47 a month of the subscription. You can find it on www.becomedurable.com, which is my website. You can see it uh, right here, becomedurable.com. Uh, and the uh, the uh, the dragon trips a lot of fun because you know we can also talk a lot of shit on there. It is not public. It is private. It's for men only. But we'll be saying things on there that would be extremely unflattering. But the end result is that everybody's going to get an extreme amount of value on it, and they will have the opportunity to grow this themselves in their own lives. It's not much time once a month, and you can save some money if you want to join three months at a time. $100. You won't find a value like that anywhere. Anyway. I I, de I, I want to double down on that because I've already <laughs> seen from being a part that the value oh, you, you, is... You, you, you joined on the premiere. That was the premiere episode. I, our premiere, uh, that was our flagship. That was the first one. You came in, yeah. Yeah, we were talking about it. So it's, uh, it's great. And for people that are, you know, because a lot of these courses and things, they can be hundreds of dollars at a time. Now, with something like the dragon ship it's it's more bite-sized yeah so that if you're you know you're busy with life uh busy with family anything that's going on you're still able to continue on that journey to improve and that's that's one thing that i really love about it as well oh i'm glad you said that it is bite-sized they're little chunks that you can actually leverage every month so that you're not overwhelmed and you can apply it in your life i think there's a lot of value in that and as this grows it can spread just like that. It can be passed from man to man. And I think that's what's really valuable. And sometimes we're going to stop and we're going to do a lecture about things that are really important, like dread game or LTR uh, durability, or shall we say, how do I screen past? I have a girlfriend now. I've had her for six to 12 months. What do I do next if I really want to have a long-term relationship? And there's a lot of behavioral things that you probably want to secure uh, for yourself and for her before you move to that next level, that is just the smart things to do to not only protect yourself, but ensure a good long-term relationship. Groundwork is laid, foundations is laid, and then you build the house on top of that. So we'll give you some of that in very small chunks occasionally as well. Good stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap up here. Is there sure. anything else that um, you want to plug? Any other things you have going on? Any other things you're going to be doing? Well, just look for my YouTube channel. It, it has been in, in somewhat of a hiatus because of a personal uh, uh, emergency that happened three months ago. Uh, my wife was in a serious accident where sh she got her neck broken by being hit by a car. And she was paralyzed from the shoulders down. So I've been having to put things on hold. But it is coming back. And we're back up uh, somewhat. So my YouTube channel is RP Thor. There's a lot already on there that you can go and look at. There's some very dry satire as well. Uh, but uh, I've just been having fun with it. But eventually, I would like to do a few live feeds, maybe a couple times a month. It's not really my primary, but I'd like to do that as a give back. Because I'll tell you, this community, having come together for me in my time of need, I'm certainly giving back. You know, I had a very important person in my life get crushed for no reason of their own. And uh, she's actually still in acute rehab now, trying to learn to walk again. So um, I appreciate everybody in the community, especially uh, Alex. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your donations. That was awesome, dude. Uh, I appreciate Absolutely. everything you've done, man, uh, for sure. Uh, so just look for my YouTube channel. And guys, uh, becomedurable.com. There is some free videos on there. There is actually a free 45-minute lecture on uh, weapons and gun safety that you might enjoy. Um, only for people that come to the website though. I also teach you how to throw axes and knives as a hobby. <laughs> hey, I'm Thor. If I couldn't throw an ax or a knife, what the <laughs> hell, right? <laughs> so you might enjoy something like that as well as, uh, I do have a small series on, uh, on the YouTube channel called, uh, the book of Odin. And what that is, is the Icelandic hovel mill, which is my background. You can see I'm a blue eyed Viking and, so I read from it, and it's often been called the Book of Odin. It's The real name is Havamel, and it was uh, the Icelandic sagas, which is 
there's some amazing segments in there that are amazingly red pilled kind of, there's like six different translations, but you can see these threads of old wisdom in there. So I did a series of seven. You might enjoy that. Each one's only two minutes, but, uh, have at it. There's some interviews on there. We had some great fun with some folks. So that's about it right there. Tell us about you. I mean, you've been on a tear, Alex. Yeah, no, I, I've been doing a, doing a lot of different stuff. Um, so a lot of these interviews, uh, a lot of these collaborations, um, I've been coaching it myself. I have a lot of full-time clients and then a lot of these full-time clients then transition into monthly clients mm. where we have monthly one-on-one -on -one talks and then I'm helping them throughout the month on certain things that they're dealing with. Uh, so that's that's been great. And then actually next week is uh, is my birthday and we are getting my first class group together again and we're all going out to Vegas. So oh man, that's close to me. I, I wish I could go. If she was out of the hospital, I'd come say hi. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna be a good time. I, I got uh, Chris Randall's uh, part of that as well. He's a good dude too. Again. Yeah, you had some you had some of my buddies on. Did you did you have Offie on? Um, I haven't had Offie on yet. I've gone okay. on with him before. Um, but yeah, cool. no, I I'm I'm still in touch with Afi all the time. He is and Chris is great too. Yeah, these are a lot of lot of super good people and what you say about like not being jealous of other success these are the type of people that always are supporting each other gassing everybody else up you know just good positive energy over and over and over again and i i just love it yeah I, i'm so happy to be you know connected with with people like you oh i can't wait man when you got when you're selling out arenas like uh some of these big guys you tell you uh, remember thor i'll come say hi Oh, I will never forget Thor. <laughs> All right. But yeah, so just moving forward, um, I'm taking a bit of a break as we're doing this uh, this Vegas trip. Um, I'm actually coming out with uh, uh, somewhat of a course uh, soon. And so I've got, I've got the landing page built. Um, the site's almost built out entirely. Uh, and so that's going to be really cool when I'm finally able to launch that and share that information with everybody. But yeah, I'm kind of going into that hermit mode for one, a little bit of fun next week, and then two, make sure I can finish this stuff up afterwards. Hey, this is what I say. You got to live a little, you know, you might as well enjoy it. And then I have an axiom. It's a little different take on things, but it's, I'll just tell you Thor's axiom. And it's become excellent and enjoy women for who they are and what they are. That's it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> Good as stuff. simple as that. Good stuff. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for uh, for joining Thor. Really appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who tuned in. Go ahead and check out Thor's information down below. Uh, get connected with him. Become, become durable.com. And look forward to uh, seeing everybody soon.